Section 2.3, Applications of Equations. Uh, I will warn you beforehand that this is, uh, a lot of people usually have difficult with, difficulties with this section. Um, application of equations, the reason they have difficulties is because it is word problems. We're going to do this one lesson a day, uh, and only this one lesson. You've got eight example problems, and that's all I've given you. Uh, I can't work one of every type of equation that, or problem that you're going to see. You take this equations and you apply what you learn from this to try to work new ones. So, and if you have any questions on your homework, I'll try to help you with that too. But just watch how I work the problems. Like I said, when you have one similar to it, you can apply what you learn from this. Example one says the average of two numbers is 46. Their product is 2035. Find the two numbers. The average is 46. Product is 2035. Find the two numbers. First thing I want you to do is define your unknown. Uh, you're missing two things here just the two numbers. So the first thing I would like for you to do is let x equal first number and y equal second number. Because a lot of times in these problems if you have three or four variables you tend to forget, okay now what did x stand for, what did y stand for. And then you take and you read through your problem again. First sentence says the average of two numbers is 46. Write an expression for that. How do you find the average of two numbers? You add them up, divide by two. Well, my two numbers here is x and y. So I'm going to add them up and divide by two. The average is 46. There's your first equation. x plus y divided by two is 46. The second part of the problem says their product is 2035. What does product mean? When you multiply them, you get 2035. Any questions so far? When you have two very, or excuse me, two equations, two unknowns. Well, before I do anything else, I'm going to clean it up as much as I can. Take and, and the next part of your problem, do you do your cleanup work? The only thing that I could do is I could clean up that first one a little bit. There you go. Since the whole side is being divided by two, I can rewrite that as x plus y equals 92. So now here's my two equations after cleanup. Have two equations, two unknowns. You can solve this. If you had three equations and three unknowns, you can solve that. If you had three equations or three unknowns and two equations, that wouldn't be able to solve. You'd have infinite answers there. But two equations, two unknowns, no problem. What you're going to do next is you're going to use substitution or elimination. I know we haven't done it yet in the book, but to me that's the easiest way to solve these. And I'm going to go ahead and introduce it now. Um, I'm going to use substitution most of the time. Because elimination, there's no way you can use elimination here. There's two different ways you could substitute here. You can either solve the x plus y equals 92 for either x or y and plug it into the second one, or you can solve x times y equals 2035 and solve it for either x or y and plug it into the first one. Uh, let's do let's do x plus y is 92, yeah, and plug it into the other one. So let's solve it. What do you want to solve it for? It doesn't matter either way. Okay, so x equals 92 minus y. Take x equals 92 minus y and plug it into your second equation 4x. So you now have 92 minus y times y equals 2035. Any questions on what I did there? Okay, next up we've got uh, 92 minus y times y equals 2035. Multiply it out. Before I even do that though, are we talking about university? What type of equation is that going to be? Quadratic. Because once you multiply it out, it's going to be y squared. So we're going to be able to solve it like the problem is university. You distribute it. So you now have 92y, negative y squared equals 2035. Get everything on the same side. But my question for you is, get it all on the left side or get it all on the right side? I'd get it all on the right in this one. Why? So you'll have a positive y squared. But once I get it all on the right side, could I really write it on the left side? Sure. Yeah. So I'm moving my y squared over, and I'm moving my 92y over, so I now have y squared minus 92y plus 2035. And you can put 0 equals that, but what I'm saying is you can put equals 0 out here to the right. It doesn't really matter. Now you have five different ways to solve it. Factoring, 
completing the square, graphing. Um, if possible, we could do take the square root of both sides, which we can't do that. And I can't remember which four I listed, but but we got five different methods that we could use here. Factoring. This would be hard to factor because you got to think of what multiplies to give you twenty thirty five. As to give you negative 92. Let me show you what the easiest way. 55 and 37. Really? You've already got that. So, good deal. Y and Y. Negative 55 and negative 37. Yeah, because negative and negative. As to give you 90, negative 92 multiplies to give you 2035. Good. So, Y equals 55. Y equals 37. Yes. That's what I was about to tell you. Make sure, once you get to there, go back and read your original problem again. And ask yourself, did I answer the problem? Did I answer what, what it was asking me? Because it says find the two numbers. And we found two different y's. We haven't found an x yet. Because x was our first number. That's two different possibilities for our second number. There could possibly be four, but look what happens when I go back and plug it in. x times y is 2035. Let's plug it in there. So if y is 55, plug in x times y equals 2035, and somebody actually divide that for me. Do you see why, why that's the two different possibilities for y? So if x is 37, the first possibility is 37, 55. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. And if y was 37, then if you plug that in, x is going to be 55. So, if you let X be the first and Y be the second one, then 37, 55, or 55, 37, there's the two numbers, regardless of which way you write it. 37 and 55, average to give you 46, and um, multiply to give you 20, 35. Example 2. It says a rectangle is three times as wide as it is high. The area of the rectangle is 253.92. What is the width and height? Another strategy. And uh, I can, I'll can i never forget the first group that I taught always kind of teased me about this, about I drew a picture for everything. And that's fine because that's another strategy, and that's actually the strategy I'm going to use here. You've got a rectangle. And it says this rectangle is three times as wide as it is high. Let's define our variables. We'll call it X or Y or whatever, and the width is three times, so three or y and 3y, x, 3x, r and 3r, whatever letters you want to use, to where the width and height is as labeled. Any questions? It, that's what it's going to go on, and it has to either tell you what the perimeter is or the area is in order for you to work this problem. It says the area of the rectangle is 253.92. Go back to it. How do you find the area of a rectangle? No, that's, that's perimeter. Adding up all the sides. Length times width, it says the area. Length times width, this times this gives you the area. 3x times x, which you can write as 3x squared, is equal to 253.92. So this is one of the easier ones. No. That's, a lot of people get thrown off by that. When you're talking about area, this is not squared. Your units are squared, like inches squared, feet squared, or whatever. It's, that's how it's measured, is, is in something squared. Next step is to divide by 3. Got my calculator here, so 253.92. Divided by 3, and you get 84.64. Any questions so far? Square root both sides, and I do want to just do this as a reminder. Anytime you square root both sides, what should you put with it? Plus and minus. So x equals plus and minus. Is it 9.2? So I just did that. You don't have to on this problem. You don't have to worry about plus and minus. Why not? You, length cannot be negative. Uh, so I can technically toss out the plus and minus. I just wanted to do that to remind you. But x is 9.2. What does x stand for? 
the height. That's what I said. Go back and make sure you review. What was it asking you? So the height is 9.2. The width is 3 times x. If x was 9.2, what's the width going to be? Plug in your 9.2 and you do get 27.6. And let's see, was there any... It didn't give you any, any uh, inches, feet, or anything, any of your units. So we'll just leave it as 9.2 and 27.6. It's always a good idea to check yourself. Since you have a calculator anyway, you can do 9.2 times 27.6, and you should get the area of 253.92.